everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, episode 305 of the Ask Gary V Show, and I'm fired up. I've had plenty of DM conversations and mutual friends and mutual love, but like really getting to sit down and chop it up with the great Wale is the opportunity at hand for the uh, small group of people, my man, that don't know who you are. Let's establish that and let's talk Wale mania, let's talk the culture, let's talk what you're about, but uh, let's establish for the couple few. Um, yeah, my name's Wale, I'm a uh, musician, artist, what have you, from DC, uh, signed to Warner Brothers Records, MMG. Uh, that's pretty much it. When did when did the music thing start for you? Um, music started for me like, um, I mean, I got my my first record deal like what two thousand seven? No, yeah, two thousand eight. Two thousand eight Interscope. That was my my first deal. But I feel like but like a, a kid. Like what? How did you like? How did you roll around DC? Like were you singing? Um, like what in, were you doing? I, I played in different go go bands. Like when I was real oh, young. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, the uh. That was like my, like that was like my, I guess my neighborhood fame or, or whatever. Um, that's why I, you know, I got uh, I got the kinks out as far as like my stage presence and, and and learning like how to to perform in front of a crowd. And taking it way back, like what kind of kid were you? Like sports, trouble, music, trouble. you were trouble. Yeah, a lot of trouble. Always looking for it, comfortable in just, it. Just always in it. Yeah, just always in it. Like. Cause you enjoyed and, it, and that it. Nah, I mean, I just had like, it's issues. Just circumstances. Issues I had to iron out, like internally. Even still, I'm still trying to iron them out. You of know, of course, you're young. Impulsive, being impulsive, and you know. But I mean, I, I could, I could Were say, you a class say clown? sports saved me though. Um, I, I, I got in a lot of trouble, like more so with like just fights, anger, <laughs> ang, anger management. Less jokes, more fists. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anger management issues. And what about? And what? Tell me about that sports thing. I mean, I played football for 12 years. Um, played Division One football, then played Division Where? Two football. Robert Morris. Oh, no way. In Pittsburgh, yeah, and then I, I transferred to Virginia State. And then uh, trouble. <laughs> and then it was just a lot of trouble after that. Talk. To, let's make the quick transition, because I'm really excited about this. I think many, uh, I think a lot of people know who you are. I think less know what's going on with this Wally Mania. So like, take me, frame it up, and then tell me how it happened. Um, basically, what is it? Let's start with that. I wanted to do an event, an event. Um, this in its fifth year, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, which I'm excited about because that's my number. It's kind of like in its infancy still. I mean, the I grand agree. scheme, you know what I mean? I agree. Um, but uh, my friend Court, um, he, he 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 said he wanted to do a party around WrestleMania, and I was like, okay, sounds like a good idea. There's and nothing. Did you fuck with wrestling growing up? Yeah, absolutely. But you're yeah. a youngster. You're more like Rock and Stone Cold. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You're young. But, I'm more like Macho Man. But it's still like I mean, I still know the history though. You know what I'm of saying? Of course, like, a good wrestling fan really knows. You gotta know because it's really like a nonstop story that it kind of never, you never had a reset. Like you know what I'm saying? With but Bron what got you in? Was it that Attitude Era? Like well, what was the first thing that I mean, got you, you in? You know, when superstars, when when I was elementary school, superstars just come on, and I mean, I was all like, you mean on was, Saturday mornings? Yeah, there was nothing. We didn't have no cable, so you know, I was looking forward to that. Um, I mean, then I took probably like a, like a five, six year break from it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like probably around the time, like, when like everybody high else school. did, by the way. Yeah. And then, <laughs> like there's this era of like Tatanka and some other <laughs> characters and nobody knows. Yeah. Dumpster Dorsey. Like <laughs> when it was like, yeah, when everybody else did. And then it came that, back. Yeah, it came like, back heavy. And um, I, I think it's more of a fascination with the behind the scenes. Storytelling. Yeah, because of the. You know, if you read if you read up on things like you know what's going on behind closed doors and stuff like that, like and that adds an extra element of intrigue for for me. You know what I'm saying? But as far as Wale Mania goes, it's really like um, you know, Court me, myself and Court did it uh for the past four years and he got his hands full now. So this guy Jesse K right behind you, I I've been begging him like, dog. I think I think it was Wale Mania too. I was trying to include Jesse. I was like, bro, you gotta feel me on this, like, cause Jesse's the tech like savvy guy that always be putting me on the shit. Like, I'm like, yo, you gotta like, and I mean, I know he don't understand the business, but I was like, bro, if you add what you do, you know what I'm saying, with what I what I do, we gonna we can have something special. So the crazy thing is he's been so busy. And you know, we just not not we couldn't get it right because it was always in different cities, and it was always somewhere obscure. obscure. It was like first it was San Jose, 
So year one was in San Jose? Uh, San Jose was, San Jose was what? San Francisco? And what was, bring it down. I really want to, I want myself to know a little bit more about the origin. So you're like, okay, bet. We're going to throw a party. Like, you know, how Clive, you know how Clive Davis has his like pre-Grammy Grammy party. party? So, or like, By the know. way, that's, you just won me over just on that. That's exactly, by the way, I actually think that model, back to Jesse being a good entrepreneur, it's funny you bring this up. I actually think that model has about 800 other things you can do. Yeah. You just did it with WrestleMania. I think Kentucky Derby. I, I think there's a lot. You I got gotta this, have a, I, a thing. A I'm, I'm going to share So I apologize while I, I got something that I've been, I'm going to fucking, I'm just going to put it out. I've been having this concept called Game One. I want to come out with a concept called Game One, which is the party before Game One of the World Series, the NBA Finals, and the NHL Finals. Like before the Finals, there's Super Bowls of one game. Yeah. But the, for the seven game series, I want to throw the crazy party the night before because it could be anywhere. Yeah. It could be in fucking Milwaukee. Wherever, whoever got the game won, yeah, at home, yeah. whoever's home. Yeah, go ahead. But you you got to have a staple. So that's, so th- I love it. That's but it, how you it, do it. There's a, there's, a, there's a bubble, like, essentially, and wrestlers, like, they really kind of live in this bubble of, like, they only hang with wrestlers and stuff I'm, like that. I'm aware. And we've been trying to change that because it's like, yo, you know, there's Real a, quick, I apologize. F- we're live, right? Facebook, are we? We're not live on Instagram, are we? Got it. Uh, put your phone numbers in. We're gonna take some questions later on, if you wanna ask Wale. We're gonna keep it wrestling heavy. I'm not kidding. Hip hop, wrestling, little business, little love for Nipsey for sure. But like, go ahead. I forgot where I was at. Oh was yeah, like, like so, oh yeah, getting out the wrestling yeah, the, bubble. Every wrestler. I, first of all, they all hang out with each other, and unfortunately, they all pass so early. Like, and, it's the and whole they thing. don't be, they don't really get to enjoy, like you know, like the the post career or the fans in the non like. You know, for wrestling fans, like, they, they know to, like, wait outside the airport for these people. And wrestlers are known to, like, tra- travel in uh, rental cars and stuff like that. Like, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. So, you know, I wanted to do something where hip-hop meets wrestling, which is a kind of a weird combination, but yeah, did some, it ends like, up work. Back, it works. Back, actually, something I wanted to ask you, and I'm glad you just brought up a weird combination. I, oh, I'll never forget when Wheezy started bringing in skateboarding and then did a rock album. And like a lot of what I think about is happening in the culture. You could take it back to Diddy with dude who had the, what was his name, Bentley with the umbrella. Like I always think about when hip hop turned. As 43 who followed it, there was only one way evolved. to be hip. It really, evolved. It really, it really evolved. evolved. There was a one dimensional nature to it in the 90s that started to evolve in a way that's crazy. Cause it's just like kids like what they like. And whenever, whenever a rapper becomes uh, to a certain level of mainstream, whatever they, whatever their interests are, are going to become mainstream interests. If it's bikes you like, or if you like, you know, but there's going to be a spike in bike life. If it's culinary things, culinary arts, there'll be a spike in culinary. If it's anime, there'll be a spike. You could better believe by the end of summer, there's going to be a lot more black women watching anime because of Meg Thee Stallion. Mm-hmm. It's just that whatever you like, it becomes more mainstream and more eyes get on it. You know. Did some of your friends hit you up though when you first kind of started talking about it and be like, "What the fuck with this wrestling shit?" Uh, a little bit. <laughs> that was the real question. A that lot, was really where I was lot. going with it. They was like, "I don't get it," but they, but also like, <laughs> but I've a couple been, of them low key said, "Yo, that's fresh that's as fr- fuck." That's fire. Jimmy fucking but, super fresh. But I went through it. With, I went through it with um, I'm uh, with, with the Seinfeld album or nothing. People like, I don't get it. I don't know. Why don't you use this comedian or that comedian? I'm like, I mean, that's the point. Like, is it does it does it does it drop of irony in it? And I think that irony is what's gonna compel people to. To it's also a level it. of authenticity. Absolutely. You like, like what you like. Yeah. Listen, that's what's happened to me in entrepreneurship. When I started telling people about buying shit at garage sales and thrift stores, my entire world came at me and like, why are you doing that dumb shit? I'm like, because I like that dumb shit. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I don't know how to tell you. Like, I love Captain Lou sitting LJN on my wall. Like, this is me. <laughs> so, okay. So you do it and you decide to throw it in. Why in San Jose? Um. Well, that's where it was. It wasn't, it wasn't. 31. Oh, my bad. So every city, every city, we go to whatever city because there's so many. There's WrestleCon the and there's all of these things. So, and fortunately for us, this is the first year that it's been somewhere that we have reached. Like we have like genuine, like support. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we drug Jesse into it now. So I'm like, you, there's no turning back now. You know, WrestleMania be in Tampa next year, so we got to provide the same energy. Burn Steakhouse, Jesse. <laughs> Burn Steakhouse. Okay, got it. So. The first year in San Jose, what happens? I want to know the origin of this. Story. It was tight. The first year was actually really good. I I forgot what album I was about to drop, but um, we about to drop an album. And it was it was album, and I was kind of nervous 
So I was like, man, I don't know what is going, what to expect. <laughs> so I got outside. That's I, already when you know something's gonna be good. But I, when you're I nervous, you're you, on the verge of something good. I always ask you since we our first show in New York, Jesse. I'll be like, yo, like, what's the real deal? And he's like, no, they're ready. Or I'm, I'm a little nervous. Like he'll tell me what it is. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Yeah, he, you won't really know, but like yeah, I could feel it though. That is I, true about him. I feel it though. I I I could see in his like if he's Demeanor. excited. Yeah, he he'll be sweating from like excitement if it's good. Like he's yeah, go yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait for you to see it. But the first year I was nervous, but we pulled up in the tour bus, and I saw Ray Mysterio and like Conan outside, and they were just chilling. And I was like, yo, oh, you know what I'm saying? I think I saw Scott Hall and like. <laughs> you know Jeff Hardy in inside, and I was like, "Wow, this is actually kind of tight." Here. Yeah, um, it was definitely like seventy-five percent wrestling then, but because I mean it's San Jose, I don't, I didn't really have no reach over there like that. So, but it was, it was a success. Like, and it was just a party. You, yeah, you performed. There was a, it was a, it was a, it was a panel. Okay, it was a panel, like a bunch of like the wrestling community, like high, the higher ups, and then it turned into a party, and I performed then. Um, I don't even really remember s s two, I three, remember four. I remember, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah, nah, <laughs> Jeff, nobody was more lit than Jeff Hardy at that time. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> Man, but yeah, yeah, okay. Guy, Scott Hall was macro, lit. <laughs> macro, like, like Scott lit. Was over there. Yeah, he was, because that's when he was trying. I was like, man, this probably sucks for him right now. Like, <laughs> but, All right, so and then you the, got it off. And in the last year, no, the year before last was like when I think we really, really turned it. Because like a lot of that? people were ah, the year before last when 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 they came on stage when they were like Samoa Joe and came on stage and stuff and then that's when we turned the corner and we had this picture of like like all the black wrestlers was like backstage it wasn't even really planned we were just like lingered to the one room and we took this picture and it was like wow you know I'm looking at Kaz like we like yo this is like some real they need this you know what I'm saying like this this is this is great for up and coming wrestlers, and it's, it's inclusive. It's not, you know, you could be indie, you could be WWE, you could do be AEW, whatever. Like it's just, it's like a lot of people get to see their their friends in the other businesses at that event. You know That's what I'm cool. saying? And how many people were at last year's event? It was probably well, it was like a thousand people. And the framework was still content, like panels and stuff, and then party, still yeah. the same framework. Yeah, it was, you know, like Hall of Fame. It's it's in its infancy, like you said. Like yeah, it's we're cool. still trying to figure things out. But like the long term goal is to like maybe have a festival like you know down the road where it's do like WrestleMania Sunday. Do they still do Hall of Fame? That's Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. No, it's, so they you, switched it, right? Yeah, NXT Friday, Hall of Fame Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And it used to be the other way around. Yeah. yeah. And NXT is at. Um, Who's your favorite all time wrestler? They probably all racist. So I don't know. That's and, right. Nah, but uh, um, probably like Shawn Michaels, Kurt. No, no, Shawn Michaels not. Kurt Hennig, Shawn Michaels. Kurt Henning. Yeah. Um, Mr. Perfect. Stone, Stone I know Cole, Kurt Henning. Stone Let me Cole, tell you Steve Austin. How, what the way Vince McMahon introduced Mr. Perfect, again, everybody here is too young. What WWE. They have the WWE network. Uh, I know. Gary. Oh, that's so true. a lot but, of us but know. I but but while I, on the network, do they show the big nets when they were building up yeah, people? Yeah. They do? Like, straight up, for everybody listening, back to like, like so I like, think my entire. Someone my, has bought the my entire, Yeah, my entire marketing like concept of like pre selling is built on how. Vince McMahon used to introduce rap uh, wrestlers. He literally, on Saturday mornings, there'd be the normal matches, but they would, like, Razor Ramon and Mr. Perfect stand out. Yeah. By the time Mr. Perfect got actually into the ring, he had you so heat. He had, like, it was six weeks of Mr. Perfect, like, hitting a hole in one, shooting basketballs. Mm -hmm. Like, he was like, Mr. Perfect. Like, they would show these two to three minute vignettes in between matches. They would have you so hyped. By the time he got into the ring, he was your favorite wrestler. Yeah. He never wrestled that he was your favorite wrestler. Same thing with Razor Ramon. Macho Man had the title. That was my guy. So I was like, fuck this Razor Ramon, because I could tell he was coming for it. <laughs> and he was doing the toothpick shit. And I was like, fuck this guy. I was scared, because I was like, Vince is going to give it to him. I, pre I appreciate the, the how they re repackage people, too, because they'll change their character, make them, well, that was take the them best. off TV for four or five Do months. Do you know this Mr. Yeah. Perfect story? Do you know that Terry Taylor? Taylor was supposed to be. Mm. Oh, you're on your shit. Mm. He had the pick. He had his pick. He picked the Red Rooster. Yeah. <laughs> because Vince was like, uh, something like, oh, he's like the, he thinks he's like the cock of the walk or something like that. So it was really like an inside joke, kind of. It I mean, was just that Terry Taylor and Henning were killing it in other networks. They were both coming at the same time. It was just that Henning's deal was like, uh, and he, couldn't, Terry, he, he couldn't recover from it either. 
was over. when Kerry Von Eric came over as Texas Tornado. Like that's when like shit was really popping at that point. That's what they call yeah. the golden era of wrestling. But you know, Terry Taylor, like even when he went to another company, tried to dump the rooster thing and it was over because it was like too it was too hokey. Like, you know, yep, it was so, over. So Kurt Henning, he got I guess he won that one. He definitely won, yeah, that, won one. that one. By picking second. Mm-hmm. Just like Durant over Odom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes picking second is better. It happens all the time. It happens. Sports. You like that? That was a good recall, right? I was proud of myself too on that one. All right, let's keep going. So so for the people watching, like, can they go? Yeah, we got a few, 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 few tickets left. Oh, I love salespeople. But the but the uh, this man's a salesman. The, that was he said walk, six fews just for everybody counting at home. Like, it's, that it's, means there's more tickets than you think, but the walk there aren't as many as you think. The walk up is gonna be a lot of like. Where is it? Let's break Sony, it down right Sony now. Let's Hall. throw the right hook. Where is it? Yo, call Cass if y'all don't because my I'm turning my phone off as soon as the doors open. <laughs> well, they don't have your number. Don't worry. <laughs> like like everybody, oh. everybody watching doesn't have your number. You'd be surprised. Uh, listen, I I see them. I don't answer them, but. <laughs> Uh, where can people? Where should people go if they want to go? Or are we? Sony Hall Times Square. What's that? Sony Hall Times Square. Sony Hall Times Square. All right. And like, what if they're watching live right now and actually are like in Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, New York, and like, fuck it, I'm coming. Where should they go right this second? Ticketmaster.com. Ticketmaster and just search it. Yeah. Just search it, right? Just search Google. It'll pop up. Yeah. If people listen to on Spotify, it'll pop up. Mm -hmm. like Let's bounce a little bit. Talk to me about music these days in your mind. Music these days, oh. With you, with you. Yeah, not I've been working. I've been working. I've been working on my um, sixth album. So how's it feeling? Good. Um, you know. How you thinking about it? Been in L. A. a lot, and um, I got a lot of. I realize in this 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 era, you really can't say too much about what you're working on, because somebody going. Excuse me. Somebody going to take it. They and that's they're famous for doing that now, because information is going like that. So a lot of people <laughs> You say something and then tonight yeah, somebody's in the studio. Yeah, I can say I'm working yeah. with somebody. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Let me reach out. You know what I'm saying? And you think supply and demand of features matters? Um when you think about I'm gonna work with this person. To some extent. Or if you're being strategic because you think somebody's about to blow, right? Yeah, well, I've I've always had a good ear for what's what's next. Um but, What's your best call ever historically on what's next? For yeah. you, you know, everyone loves to talk about this shit. Like just for fun. In your career, you've been like you can go back to being a kid Maybe, uh, or when you were in the game. Who were you most right about? J Cole, earliest, earliest too. J Cole, that was our first, Cole. my first album. J Cole, um, uh, Lady Gaga. She wasn't doing no hip hop. She wasn't doing features. She wasn't really Lady Gaga when um, when, when you came across yeah, her. Dua Lipa. Uh, I mean, she she's probably like the second or third Meg biggest. Stallion. Meg The Stallion. He's a who? J Balvin. I mean, he wasn't out. I don't who was the earliest of the five people you just named? Who was in the earliest part of their career when you're like, "Fuck," just out of curiosity? Probably Dua, maybe. If you, if, 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 if when it, in terms of like just how the, much of they have uh, from where they are there to where they are now? No, Dua. no, actually, more literal. Just like who was at the earliest point of their career, regardless, because they're all big. Who you just mentioned at some mm -hmm. level, like, like who was just the earliest? Nipsey, on oh, Chun Li, yep. That was 2013 maybe. And it was like really like, he was really coming up and I remember Dallas put the play together and I, me, me and him always had mutual respect for each other. That, he probably was the earliest. Mike Boyd, you were so early on Nipsey, it's uncomfortable to me. Like just like even hearing him say 12 and thinking about you in 09, it's great. Like I just had to give you love just looking at your face right now. You were so fucking early, it scares me. Man, I'm so sad. I'm still it's, in the weirdest it's, funk. It's, this is I'm, weird I'm, I'm try, I snap in and out of it. I didn't sleep last night. I thought it was okay and then I wasn't and then I just woke up and then I just started looking at our text and like the, the our like video and stuff like that like of uh, hanging around each other in the studio. Like I go in and out of it. Like it's, you know, cause you can't go on no social media without oh, like I'm... it's everywhere. So it's like one of the most devastating things that happened in the past like 20 years of this this game. 100%. 100%. Let's go back to wrestling for a second because I'm just I don't want to get sad. Who uh who do you think is the most over and you become friends with a lot of people. So this is more like not personal, just like fun wrestling talk. I, I appreciate the disclaimer. Yeah, cuz it's important. You know what I mean? Like cuz I want you to talk as a fan because sometimes You know how many you know how many jobs I turned down cuz I didn't want like sports job like podcast or like host this or that. Cause I don't want to get involved it's in that. It's the number. I can't believe we're talking about this. This is why I love doing shit like this. Now we're just gonna chop it. The number one weird thing in my life happening right now, because I've gotten so, into a place in my career 
with a sports agency, with what's happening with music, with content, everything, I just know so many more people. So now. You gotta be careful sometimes. Yeah, and I don't like that. I don't like being careful. Yeah. I wanna be historically correct. Yeah. So one of the reasons, I can't believe you just said this, ESPN and all these podcasts, like Barstool, like a lot of people are trying to ask me to do a lot of content. And like, it was much more fun when nobody knew who the fuck I was to say (laughs) Scottie Pippen's overrated as fuck. Cause now when I say it, and I mean it, I just don't want to run into Scotty and be like, oh man, like you're a good guy. Like that's, I, I'm talking about you, the player. Like I don't really, I mean it as a player. Or like, I was about to ask you who you think the most overrated wrestler is. And it's hard to answer that question because Hulk you Hogan. Might... <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Underline that shit, put a star. Why? Uh, fuck him. But also. Um... <laughs> Let's not go. I was kind of framing not <laughs> personal, but cool. Nah, but let's um, go not personal for a second. Nah, but I mean, out of like he was, you he clearly was cre- are not. He was created Listen, by anybody them. who knows the the Kurt Henning, Terry Taylor. Like I'm like want to nerd with you a little bit mm-hmm. as a wrestler. Why? Because you think his finishing move is ludicrous. It, it's this stupid, but I mean, the people, <laughs> no, really, real quick. The people's listening. elbow is stupid too, but the, 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 look, he was the people's elbow is stupid. He was. I mean, it's, it's entertaining though. But Randy Macho Man's top rope elbow to your fucking chest hurts. Yeah, I mean, it hurt him too. For real, like, like that shit hurts. Like, like go was, up high, drill somebody in their fucking chest with an elbow, that but, hurts. But you know, a like, leg to your throat that doesn't even connect? But he's 300 pounds. But anyways, <laughs> it, he, he, he was created by, like he was created to like sell toys. And you know what I'm saying? It's not, I mean, he wasn't really a technical like, he, you know, his, his. Oh, you're going, you're the, the going, ca- the you're, cash you're ca- going into Ricky the Dragon versus Macho Man being the best match ever because it's technically crazy. Even if because you throw that out the way, it's just like his the the the, the money uh, around him was like they were putting money in him. Vince was marketing him, putting him on stuff, and well, Vince was and, marketing and, and, the Rock and Stone Cold too. But they were delivering like Hulk Hogan was like the 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 number one the only person they were putting money behind they were put I mean his movies never really were successful yeah. so he really didn't have like the acting chops to be like a super duper big star and a lot of his success came from just great business and great behind the scenes finagling Who's, and being a heartless businessman who was the most underrated this is much harder Flash Pump. Well, too cold, Scorpio. Too cold, Scorpio. Oh, too cold, okay. Scorpio. He was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He was huge when I was a kid in mm-hmm. the magazines. Pre-internet, you had to get other things. Mm-hmm. Like, for, like the reason I knew who Bad Bad News Brown was was because I would read the magazines. I knew he was Bad News Allen. Like, you know that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah, he was legit. I learned. I mean, I learned like a lot of it is like you know, you know, retroactively. I'm I'm, I'm finding out. Right, but you're I'm, learning backwards. I remember like. You know, when getting taped like them VHSs of, mm-hmm. of uh, ECW, and I really didn't even—I I don't even know if I put together that he was there. Maybe I seen like a match or two. He was young. even before. Yeah. But I was—I I watched a lot of his stuff like on YouTube and mm-hmm. like, and then like you know I'd be reading like the old uh, Dave Meltzer like uh, uh, dirt sheets or whatever, mm-hmm. and I'd read like the end of the year little awards Rankings, and stuff. I and he would he would win a lot of like the underrated, so I checked it out and I was like, okay, I get it. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. Plus, what about you now? Know, Are you watching wrestling now? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. Like, as much as I can. I mean, it's I over, busy, overly, yeah. kind of overly, it's overkill now. It's Who like, do you fuck with now, currently? Uh, New Day, Seth mm-hmm. Rollins. Seth's real good. Who else I like? Um, Matt Riddell, Matt Riddle, Riddell or Riddle, Matt Riddle, Riddle. Matt Riddle. Uh, There's a couple people though. Uh, Ricochet for sure. Apollo Crews. You ever wrestle? Hell no. Nah. Play football though. I know, but like, would you? <laughs> nah. I feel like you know how boxing's become you, a trend. Like I think people are. I, I could see wrestling becoming like two thousand twenty one, like, like cool of muscle, workout thing. Ten pounds of muscle, maybe I might do it. Do you secretly, in the back of your mind, knowing that you're kind of winning in the wrestling culture and you are who you are in culture, do you secretly think that you're going to show up in WrestleMania? Um, I was yeah. I was this That's close. That's all I needed. I was this close to doing it this year. I've, I've gone to all the rest of my No, no, you know home. what I mean. <laughs> Enter the ring, hit somebody with a chair. Like Co- Colin Jost yeah, and, um, like, like, and Michael like, Shea. Like everybody, like Tyson. Like I went to WrestleMania, or yeah, it was WrestleMania in Boston back in the day. 13 with, my, with Tyson. Yeah, there. when Tyson. Yeah. The best part of that one, I come down with a sign that says, I love the Jets. 
I need somebody to clip that for me. If Gary's, you have the VHS, yeah. like so literally, we clear on Gary's definitely a heel. Like I love the Jets. That just, was that the was most it. troll. That was just it. I the was just troll. like, let me establish this in WrestleMania. Ever have to recall in thirty years? I and just I bet did you it. felt amazing just, too. It was the best fucking feeling. <laughs> the fact that I was in the background, like that's me. Um, especially I was in Patriot Land. I love. I love. Oh, I really trolled. Curtis Martin just became a Jet. From the Patriots, and I wore a Curtis <laughs> Jets jersey, and everybody was fucking heated. This is before they won. I like trolling 000. the UFC fans, honestly. There was a UFC dude that was like, yo, who the fuck is Wale? And I was like, yo. And I showed him a picture of him like getting beat up. And like all the, all, all the UFC fans were like, you think you can win? I was like, yeah, I can totally be that professional mixed martial. <laughs> and they're like, wow, you're, you're crazy. You, you're just a rap. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to shoot him. Yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. And they're like, yo, you're gonna kill, you're stupid, you can't beat him. I'm like, oh God, you guys are really, really into this, huh? I like it though, I enjoy it. You, real quick, just a segue, boxing, mixed martial arts, do you fuck with that too? Yeah, I'll be at UFC next week. You, do you did you grow up liking boxing? Mm-hmm. Who was your favorite boxer? Zab Judah and Prince oh Nassim. Oh my God, I love Zab Judah. Prince Nassim was my favorite. Just because just he was so flashy as fuck. He was yeah. out, if you don't know who Prince <laughs> Nassim is, you should look it up. He was ridiculous. It's so funny. He's so he funny. makes Floyd look calm. No, he looks he he makes Adrian Broner yeah. look like Adrian's humble. Some, Adrian's on some different. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, like, I, I, I like love Prince. Na- Prince Nassim was my guy. Him and Zab were my guys. Like, and obviously Sugar Ray because he's from right around my way. But oh, is that right? I just used to love like I love like sh- sh- I think showmanship could go up a little bit more in boxing like it was in like the mid nineties and yeah, it's a little like quiet that. a little it's, bit it's right now. Kind. Well, yeah, I mean, you got guys. I mean, you know, some some dudes can back it up like, but. The dudes that back it up. Wilder so gets a little crazy. He gets yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he yeah, gets yeah. a little hyped. Yeah, he, he's crazy. He got serious in that interview. He's, he's annoyed. He's yeah, like, he got a little serious. I got scared a little. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. Just in my Instagram feed, I'm like, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> he got a little. He got going. I like his game. Uh, what What else is on your mind? What else uh, matters? Uh, well, I'm trying to see what's next. You know what I'm saying? Um, after this album, we when do you think really... the album drops? Soon. <laughs> so um I'm just trying to see what's next for me like um this re- I, I, I can't get off this wrestling like you like let me ask you a very interesting question that I'm very interested in right now mm-hmm. if wrestling in the macro could be your entire career would you do it no nah, I can't what do per- one thing what percentage of your time and energy 20 okay but what else in comparison in a, a perfect world 60 would be music 50 to 60 and uh, then? film Film and TV probably. Talk to me about that. Um, How are you thinking about it's that? It's a difficult. It's a difficult place to get to get in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I mean, I do believe it's worth it. I, I, I feel like it's something I could get, put my time in when I start to have more time, and that, that'll probably come after this album. I could really, really, really put some time in to writing and stuff like that. You want to write and produce. You want to be in it. We'll see what we'll see what, what fate carries. Balls in play. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, let's do some questions. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't really toured Instagram, the right way in a minute. Facebook. So after tour, after tour, after or during tour. Do you tour. love performing? Do you, give Depends. me this. Give me this. I, I give you a hundred points of energy, like love from your heart mm-hmm. in studio, performing on stage. 50, 50, it, it 80, depends. 20. It depends. Like if I got, if I'm on tour and the uh-huh. tour already sold out, the hundred percent is touring. Just because the energy. Yeah, of the fucking- yeah. I'm pop up shows when you're just going somewhere and people are like kind of curiously trying to see what's going on. I'm not a big fan of those. Because you don't want to be selling? Yeah, yeah. I, I just, understand. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. Just, you notice how I asked you that? Uh-huh. I never want to prove to anybody anything. Yeah. I hate that feeling. You just want to I'd go. rather not do it. You, you want... Don't worry. We're, we're, we're about to take a question. <laughs> don't, let, don't, let, don't let Andy scare you. She's in here Aliens too? aren't here. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, you don't... Right? That's the reason, right? Mm-hmm. I just want it to be like, it's already understood. Like, you know, and I could do the song. I don't have to do like... Straight Damn, up I have a question I want to ask you, and I don't want to fuck up the album. I was about to ask you. I'm gonna ask it anyway. And you decide how to navigate it. Who would you love to do a track with? Man. Or, or let me ask a different thing that you can definitely answer. Who old school as fuck? Boyd knows this, and anybody who follows me, I can't. Let's let's hold on that for a second. I can't get the feeling out of wanting desperately contemporary artists to do more shit. We brought up Gaga earlier. The Gaga Tony Bennett shit, I fuck with heavy. Right. There's some. I love old people. Right. I I just feel like there's so many legends still running around that I just want you to hit up and be like, yo, you want to do this? Like Quincy Jones or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Like just like. Honestly, thing that's even less top of mind, like one of the four tops, right. or like S- Smokey Robinson. I don't know why I'm stuck on this. 
I just want him to be in a song with like Lil Baby. Like right. if I woke up this morning and be like, Lil Baby and Smokey put out a track, I would lose my shit. <laughs> Is there anybody super iconic that your grandma Stevie listens to? Stevie Wonder. Yeah, see, that's another one I bring up a lot. Stevie I feel Wonder. like Stevie Wonder, like if Boyd texted me, he's like, your dream came true, Wale and Stevie Wonder have a track, I'd be like, thank you, God. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot, you know? I think a, somebody, I think there's, a, there's, certain, there's certain producers that I'm can ready. get stuff like that down. I do too. For sure. I do too. I think there needs to be more of that. I think the legends need a contemporary platform and I think, who's this? Rich? Rich, what up? It's Gary V with Wale. No way. Yeah, well you put your no, you put your number in. <laughs> oh my God, I must be behind you guys a little bit. because Yeah, I'm turn that off. You know laptop. how they do it on the radio? Like turn all your radio right, down, right, like turn right. that shit off. Yep. Yeah, I got you. All right. What, uh, What's going on guys? How are you? We're good, Ridge. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Cranston, Rhode Island. Great. What's your um, question? I'm hanging out watching you guys. We appreciate My question it. for Wale was uh, I want to ask him how, about how much money like did you really invest into music through studio time, getting your beats, your leases, all of your I promotion until you started me. finally I still am. a substantial amount come back. I got it. I got. I got. I'm on my what? My fourth record deal, and I still um, invest in uh, money in the music. It's like. Hey, well, like, what he's really asking mm -hmm. is he's looking to quantify the excuse that is in the system. Mm -hmm. Before you got it, how much money did you spend before you got signed mm -hmm. on uh, on your career? Because what he's saying, which is right for 99% are watching, you know. A lot of people don't have the dollars, but they have the dream. Right. How did you, and listen, I don't know enough about you. I didn't did you have hustle? My, I, like, did you we, just like. No, I, worked what, at, I worked at a sneaker store. Keep talking. I had a little bit of, you know, little bit of this and that. that I was trying <laughs> to, not, not major, but it was just, you know, enough I for mean, some Jay's. On your, on your, Jay's go stuff. ahead, Rich. Everything that I had, though. I, everything Rich, that go I ahead. Had. Build. I guess. I guess. Because this is something right, I want to talk about. Kind of a stupid question. It's not uh, stupid. It's not, like a, it's not a stupid. Thing for, it's it's not stupid. Me. I want to know why you asked it, because I don't think it's stupid. Let's just definitely start there. I'm just. Uh, and I'm real quick, Rich. So, and I'm not judging. Yeah. I want to give you permission mm -hmm. to fucking go. That, yeah. Just just recognize where my energy is coming from. I definitely don't think mm -hmm. it's stupid. I I I just want you to win. And when people use yeah. money as a rationale to why not. They don't, so I'm excited that you asked it, and I want you to let you continue. Go ahead. So I was just, I guess, just trying to hear where Wale was coming from. I'm a big fan. Um, I make music. I produce. I have a clothing brand that I started, a charitable clothing brand where we give back to our community. Yep. I was adopted from Bogota, Colombia when I was six months old. That's good. So I'm just trying to make the best of my experience here in America. I have a lot of opportunity. I also make music, and I have uh, about three of my best friends coming together on a collaborative as a group. And um, we've just been working at it for probably put in about eight years now into the music and just a lot of time and energy. And I was just like, I guess trying to hear like around when, cause I know it's all about putting in the work and the time and the, the you know. Ridge, but you also know this, right? Studio. Like there's, there's people that do it for 11 years and then pop. And then there's people like Yachty like early and it happened, like things happen differently for different people. Yeah. You know, like, I'm gonna let Wale answer, but like, the answer to that question always, startups, music, oh, like, everybody's on their own different path. There's some people that the finally stars break. Gotta align, like, the stars align differently, you know? You could, you could I mean, like, it's, but it's good that you have you have means of income of, of a clothing line and, and things like that, and you're not doing it alone, because I remember when I started, like, we didn't have that much. There wasn't, any, there wasn't any, even any rappers from DC when I was coming up, so yeah. that, that dream seemed really, really, like, impossible, or improbable but you know the fact that you got a clothing line and you have a brand and you have a vision is 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 you're you're way ahead of the game right now as far as like trying to get I'm, in I'm still doing uh i still have my nine to five job that i use for my steady income too, on top of that so and listen ridge i'm going to say something because everybody's got to hear it this is actually not specific to you the other thing that we just have to talk more about especially when people talk about the grind and the hustle and the timing like music business, sports. America needs to have a better conversation around talent. Yeah. You know, and I have no idea anything, as you know, about you, but like, you know, talent is part of this. 
Not as much as it used to be. Unfortunately, it's not as much as it used to be. Chop on that. There's a lot of there's like a lot of talented people that won't, might not get a shot in the dark. Like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that just you know things just happen for them or right place, right time or right image, right. Yeah, but I because a lot well, of like, wouldn't like, you say when you started versus now where SoundCloud and Spotify and Instagram like more talent has more at bats than ever before. I think it's different. I think that like you got you could just be somebody willing to make a complete fool of yourself to get in the door. And then boom, or, yeah. or you might know that you might have a guy that knows the algorithms, and you might just catch something, or because but let's sarca- judge, let's sarcasm, not- sarcasm, and like hyperbole are like the language of this era. Like people will call the worst things amazing, and then it's amazing enough till it's not. It's it's actually really kind of so bad that it's good. Like and I think we but live who, in. But that. who gets to decide, right? Because as like older kid in this room, like. People say that about entire genres. Right. Like to me, the question in the statement that you just made, and Ridge was co-signing with his with his, you know, grunts of yeah, yeah. Like, like to me, the question is who gets to decide. Like the consumer is the judge. Right. Right. Like, like all I hear from my like so many people who are my age that grew up listening to music and hip hop with me are like, Gary, why do you love all that shit in Atlanta? All that mumble shit. That's not real hip hop. I'm like motherfucker. When we were 20, and everybody said this wasn't real music. Right. You're you get the judge gonna right get the fuck out of here right so to me the audience is the judge as, as, at some point yeah right? you're right I mean like right, right? like yeah. I, listen opinions who we is all the, have who them. are the audience though like we talking about ch- like ch- small children that don't really go outside so some something is appealing to them and they kind of grow out of it in two years well it, no no now you're talking about something I care about right. which is really important we're, this is where we're all three of us are probably saying the same thing mm-hmm. there's one thing to have a moment there's another thing to have a career absolutely. And what we don't know yet, True. right, Rich? Like what we all don't know yet yeah, right now 100%. is the current sound. What? Because they told Rolling Stones was gonna be a fad. Right. I, like I lived in New Jersey when everybody said to me, why do you like Run DMC? Like nobody's gonna but be also, listening you to that look shit at, look in a year. The, look at the double lived... XL freshman though. Look at the double XL freshman. Let's look. talk about it. These are the people that, that were told to us that are gonna be leaders of this this next year or the next, these are gonna be career artists and it hasn't panned out. So well, some of them well, didn't even scratch the surface well, of it. Well, I love you on this because it's really funny that you brought up the list because I will tell you the single, this is just facts, no hyperbole. The single reason I fell in love with hip hop for real, for real, was unsigned hype. If you know my career, I was just bragging to everybody, I bought 300 Giannis rookie cards. The only thing I love in life, this is why I was a good investor, is knowing what's about to happen. Is this an investment? If you or wanna, this, if you wanna this, make real money, this mm-hmm. is no joke. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it right now on the record. In the next five years, investing in sports cards are gonna outpace sneakers in the flip wow. game. Yep, saying it. Right now, there is something really happening with six to nine year old kids, seven year old kids. Let me tell you what's happening. 43 year old dudes like me, when cards were the fucking apex when we were kids, we now have six, seven, yep. eight year olds. And the whole reboot is on. Mm. Like, you listen to me, I'm gonna, this is just for fun. You wanna make money if you're watching right now? Go to eBay. And by Giannis rookie cards, number 290, 2013 Panini Prism, PSA 9, 10 graded, they're 300 bucks, 250 to 300 bucks right now. God forbid they win the finals this year and stun the Warriors, it'll be 600. But even if not, unless he has catastrophic injuries, this is the best player in the NBA in four years, and this is an $800 card in four years. So think about it. You put in 300, 800, that's good, because you can flip it right away. If you got a little money, three thousand is eight thousand. If you got some money, money thirty thousand is eighty thousand. What if they get 000. better at bootlegging cards in four years? Though? Well, that's what got interesting about this this PSA shit. Mm-hmm. Like, there's always bootlegging. You know, there's always something. And I appreciate the uh, cynical POV on it. But like, mm-hmm. th- I'm telling you right now, for every, I'm telling you right now on the easy flips, on all the Nike, the off whites cards in the next five years are gonna outpace sneakers. Now, let me say this, sneakers are gonna be bigger because it's culture, it's big, but there's a lot of money in the system already. Like, the people that really made yeah, bank were- There's too many flippers. Is yeah, just, it just becomes, a, it's a supply and remember demand game. when there was only just one flight club and that was it in New York? I now sure like, do. There's, now, there's one on every block. Man. That's right, supply and demand. Mm-hmm. So, I'm telling you, and specifically basketball cards, and specifically if you wanna make real money, and I can't believe this is gonna come out of my mouth because I hate the man more than life, I already referenced it. I believe that Michael Jordan rookie cards are one of the most underpriced things that investors can invest in today. Because basketball, Michael Jordan fan. 
My man, when I tell you that I hate Michael Jordan. Because is it a Knicks thing? Yeah, I'm, a thir- I'm 43. <laughs> if you're 43, listen to me. If you're 40 to 50 and you're a true New York Knicks fan and you don't hate Michael Jordan, fuck you. That was the first time I met Jay-Z. He was like, I love Michael Jordan. <laughs> I don't care. I, I don't, like, I, if you're I'll real, be honest, like, I didn't get to watch Jordan, so I can't really speak on that. LeBron's more my generation. I get it. I get, the only reason I love LeBron yeah. is because I needed him to beat Jordan. Like every the next kid, like Zion. <laughs> like I love everybody who's next. Zion, like bring them all on. I need somebody to dethrone Unless him before I die. Unless somebody goes to the Bulls or something. Yeah, that'd be terrible. If Zion goes to the Knicks, you'd be Dude, happy. Dude, my guy. whole my, the Jets and the Knicks are my fucking life, and I've had to live through forty fucking years of Jordan so and you Brady. Need Zion. I'm fucking, so Zion's gonna be here after draft. He's gonna be right in this seat right here talking to you. My man, if we get Zion, <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna throw the television. Look at this guy. Like I can't oh wait. I can't wait for this lottery thing. Me and my boys are getting together gonna, for the I'm bouncy ball thing. If we get Zion, I'm gonna rip the fucking with, with, TV. You at, throw the lottery, it at somebody. I need I'm to so be, happy. I need to be oh, next God. to you. Man. You know he wrote an article about how they have the NBA needs to just give the give Knicks, the Knicks Zion. Be the best thing for the <laughs> it would. It would. You know the you know the league gave the Knicks Patrick Ewing, right? I agree. I've been freezing. Anybody but Cleveland, man. They they can't. Yeah, no, nah, y'all had too much. Fuck Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland. Oh, man. I love Cleveland. Bo- Bo- you know what? Bone Thugs year. and Harmony is the reason I like Cleveland. Like, I when that, that came out, I lost my shit. Talk about, like, that was when... I thought I that was know. from L.A. when I was little. I didn't... I thought well, that, I was it like... It had all that kind of, like, you know, that, you know, the N.W.A. flavor. Yeah, easy, easy yeah. yeah. Fucking Bone Thugs is underrated. Mm-hmm. Straight up. Bone Thugs is underrated. All right, Ridge. Thank you, man. Listen, if I can help you in any way, it's Gary right. at VaynerMedia. Let me know. Hey, I got you. Thank you very much, You're welcome. Guys. Let's sneak one more in. I didn't think both thugs was going to get brought up today, but I'm happy. I'm happy they did. This, I really... this room is like a kind of like a, a visual like depiction of my brain. Like it's just all <laughs> sports. That might be the best compliment I've gotten in a sports, while. Sports wrestling and just randomness. Like my what about brain, wine? You fuck with a, wine? Yeah, yeah. Anything right, that's going to give me empathy. fry. Anything that's going to take me there. I'm talking, I'm <laughs> Here you go. You know what, Brutus the Barber Brutus, Beefcake. He's in the Hall of You know Fame, what happens yeah. tomorrow, right? Yeah. Our New Jerseys. Our New Jerseys. They leaked. Is that true? The, is that image that was leaked? I was invited to it as well. Jets, Mets, man. Who, who do you like? The Redskins? You're a Redskins fan, right? I don't want to have this conversation. You're a Redskins fan. <laughs> Wait a minute. He, who's this? Gary, chill out. No, Wale. I need I can, he's about to just. No, no. no. You better be a Redskins fan. I'm absolutely. Okay, yeah. good. Well, we're. I love Redskins fans because I hate the fucking Giants. Yeah. Okay. I fuck with Redskins fans heavy. I we got cel- no problems I, I with each celebra- other. I celebrated when no Odell left. We got no problems with each other. I love that Odell's gone. We, we shared Santonio Holmes. We shared Lavernius Coles. Yeah. I fuck with the Redskins. Yeah. Darius Geis is my guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm hoping he comes back this year. He's going to be Deshaun Jackson's the fucking. I fucking love that man. Well, I, he's, I, he's well, an well now you have to hate him again because he's an eagle. I get it. Okay. Who's this? Brian. Brian. What up? Hey, hey, Gary. What's up, buddy? Uh, hey, Wale. What's going on? What's up, boss? What can we answer for All you? All right. Uh, that, quick, quick question. Then, Gary, I met you back uh, January 29th. I came to your office. Uh, great time. I appreciate you uh, uh, having us in your office and spending some time with us. Happy to do it. Um, my question was uh, to Wale. I'm in the DMV, and I was just uh, hitting you up to see if you needed help with anything. I'm not looking for any money. Just if you need if you need some help to leverage your time. Man, that's a that's a vague thing, but I definitely appreciate it. Um, I'm in a weird place right now where I'm trying to figure out what I need and how I need it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm gotcha. trying to, like I'm I'm in the process of uh, trying to get another another location where I can not have to be have it turned on all the time, mm-hmm. or I can or I can't go to the grocery store, or I could go on a date or something like that. Like I want to be able to. Maneuver and not feel like a prisoner in my own house. So that, amongst uh, you know, learning the, the new uh, situation I have at Warner Brothers, and you know, and being able to flourish in that building, and trying to see where I'm going to put money at, like you know, what I'm going to invest in. So it's it's right now I'm trying to build my company, Ari Blue Moon, and, and seeing where where it goes. Will it take me in the film? Will it take me into more of an executive role in music? Um, but I think in order to be able to employ people. You gotta really, you really gotta solidify where you at and where you're going, and I, I think that's one of the things I've struggled with is actually knowing where I'm going and and, and having a, a a steady plan for myself, and um I think once that happens, I think that I'll be able to exactly know what I want without wasting nobody's time and energy. I love that. Gotcha, man. I appreciate the, you being up front. My Listen, man. I appreciate the call, man. 
All right, thank you. Thank you. Of course. You. you know, it's super interesting that you just said that. I think uh, that level of self-awareness has got you on third base already. I think one thing that you need to think about about is it's going to always adjust. Where you're going is always gonna adjust. Because mm -hmm. once you scratch an itch, a new one emerges. Yeah, I've been a nomad for the past like 10 years. Like I've just been moving and moving and moving. And do you want to plant a flag? Uh, I do, but I just kind of got to figure it out because I'll be thinking like, okay, uh, let me, New York is a lot going on and then I'm like, damn, it's winter in New York and it's cold. <laughs> it's, it's cold and it's dark uh, at four o'clock. I don't like this. Then I'm like, LA, I'm like, okay, wow. Like, why are all the girls on cocaine? And I'm like, all right, let me get out of here. Then I'm like in Atlanta and I'm like, wow, like this is like, it's cool, but it's like a party every single hour of every day. The club's closed at six and it's not healthy. <laughs> so then I go back to DC and it's like, I want Apple Jacks. And it's like, okay, you can't get Apple Jacks because there's people waiting for you in the store following you around getting pictures. And it's like, I'm socially like introverted. So I don't know yet. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to be. Thought about I think the, I want to be. Have you thought about both. the suburbs of one of those places? Uh, I think one of the things I think when I, I, lived I hear in the you say, I lived in the suburbs of every single one of those places. And still, yeah. I mean, you can't. I mean, suburbs in New York is still going to be two o'clock in the afternoon, frozen outside, <laughs> and dark as hell. You're scared so. of cold. I just get depressed when it's dark yeah, early. It. It's just I, I can't. It. I can't control. I've done everything to try to like block it out, but it's like when you open the door and it's just like. Cold gonna, and you can't go nowhere, it's just miserable. I'm gonna close with something that I, for some reason, wanna do. I have a really interesting question for the 20 fucking people in this room, straight up. Uh, hot take, quickest reaction to what I'm about to say. I am fascinated by the admiration and love towards Wale in the macro. Like there's, there's a, I, I know a lot of people in the game. Part of my ignorance, macro. I'm, I don't have education. Uh, uh, I don't have an education either. Thanks. In the wide respect. You, you want to see something for real? I stand an uneducated my genius. My man, that is my fucking report card. I mean, I see some A. Oh, that's phys ed. <laughs> <laughs> All four A's are phys ed. That's 9, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. That I got four me. A's in my life. That I'm a gym me. class fucking hero. <laughs> Just so you know, Hall of Fame gym class, motherfuckers. Uh, for the, for the room. I know a lot of people in the game, there's a lot of people respected, there's all sorts of stuff. There is an actual love for this man. Yeah. Why? Because uh, at the end of the day. Absolutely, I got the opposite too though. But not not to focus on it, but I'm I'm not I'm just saying I just don't wanna be I don't want everybody to come and thinking like like a Mother Teresa. Oh no 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 that's that's I'm not saying Mother no, Teresa. Okay. Mm. There's a genuine love towards you though. Hip hop is very You agree with me, right? That's a little bit different, like it's a little different. Like, there's respect, yeah. there's love, the street fucks with people, main street fucks. There's just something weird. Like, I don't know. This is actually what I'm asking. Yeah. Like, I'm in it enough to usually know shit. There's some weird thing that I don't, it's not that I don't get. I, it's uh, very nice to, I'm, I'm asking it in like, from the people closest. Ask somebody who don't like me at West. Why, why, Wes, why, why like do him. people like me? Wes fucks with me, but he doesn't really like me. He just kind of puts up with me. That's because he really knows you. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? I was just making a joke. No, no, you, you spot on though. I said, because he really knows you. No, no, no. So this, this for me, it's yeah. like, he's like the little brother, like, that, of course. that's like, you got to you love him, but you know he has everything. Like, you, you know, he, he he's him. He's unapologetically him. This is what it is. Like, it's you brother. take him with all this shit. Like, you take everything with it. Yes. Why does the, why does the collective, why is there such love towards him? No, real. nobody's gonna get yeah, nobody's gonna get that. You're not gonna get that yeah. from every. He's him every day of the week. On good days, bad days. Yeah, day, good days, bad days. I know he was early day. on Twitter. And there's and, and, and there's like seven of me too. Yeah, yeah. I'm like I got, I got like all multiple yeah. personalities. It's really fucked up. But I, it, 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 maybe people like different Boyd, parts of him. I trust you the most, and I'll let you in next, Jess. Boyd, your hot take on that. He's just a real artist. So like you know how you guys are talking about some people are here and there, come and go. Yeah. Like no one, no one. So, Even when he's quiet. Except for Wale. <laughs> Wale, by the way, I actually think that makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. I think I'm about to, I don't know how, I don't Wale, know I honestly if I want to make I mean enough, jack shit. Like, for all the things going on with me, I don't mean, I don't think I mean shit. I think it, tomorrow it could go. No, you got a lot of money, but. No, I'm being serious. Mm -hmm. I feel you though. Money, you, bull, come on. I know, You're too smart I know, for that. I Fuck, do like, this. I know. I know you know. That's why I, I said. I'm just saying, if it goes, it's like. It impacts the fucking, like, you, you know what I mean? You can do, you got you got house money a little bit to play with, like to go, to, to pursue other things. Can I throw you a real curveball? Uh -huh. I love Rocky Six. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Secretly, in my deepest dark shit. Is that shit, the one when he, the movie? The one where, it was five, thank you for correcting Jesus. me. The one when he fights the dude in the alley at the, the end? The one when he goes back to zero. I'll be real honest with you, I'm on some, like, I, I've got a dark part of my brain and soul that wants to, I hate that people, like, I want to go to zero. The reason I can I help going, you with that. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'll just give it to you. Yeah, yeah, I, just, let's just invest in some shit. That's some a dumb 1%, shit together. A 1% chance of making it, but like, you want to go to zero? Let's do it. You know, Phil's, you wanna live on Phil's the edge? dying to do this shit. Or we could go to Atlantic City and just figure it out. Fucking hell. Oh, Fuck it. About Wale. He is so ambitious. He wakes up 5 a.m., 6 a.m. He's on his mind is rolling all the time. He, oh, he always is trying to figure it out, how to do better, how to better himself. It's ingrained in him. And the other thing is he cares. He really deeply cares about everything. And he can turn it off, but deep in his heart of hearts, this man cares about everything, and it's different than most people out there. It's you know really what I wanted to do? What? I wanted to do another wrestling promotion, right? And this was like, it's about 10, this was like maybe like a separate seven, league. Yeah, like, yeah, but okay, because there's a lot of indie leagues, but yeah. like WWE is, I know, like for better or worse, it's Coca-Cola. Then for in order and for Coca-Cola. today it's Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Yeah. They, they, right they, now they, it's they, Coca-Cola they, they and Pepsi. They monopolized it. But uh, you know the cons, the guy who owns the Jacksonville Jaguars, yep. right? he's doing it. He's he's trying uh-huh, to. Come, I'm aware. But I wanted to do it. Um, his well, like his seven flavor years was ago. the Japanese kind of like a little flavor, right? It yeah. Was, well, yeah. they get a lot of the indie guys yeah. and all that. But I wanted to do so, one that was a little bit more adult driven with the storylines, who kind of like you didn't have to suspend your disbelief that much, and you know, and have like health health care and like all of these things and, tr- and like an off season and all of that. But you know how much money it costs to even to even fuck with Vince McMahon. So a lot of people just got to be like, look at the AAF. They got to close down now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's just certain things you, your ambition can't match, like, like the reality. The, the reality. Like, AAF, it was entertaining. It was fucking, like, we needed some more football. football. It was good football. It was good football. And now it's, and now it's done. Fan. What do you think about the XFL? Do you think it got a shot? Yeah, because I think the, look, I think. What does XFL have that AAF I don't know. It? You'll appreciate this. I don't know because I don't know what XFL is doing, right? right? Here's what I know. I, a lot of my life has been predicated on things that didn't make sense. When I believed in Facebook, mm-hmm. nobody thought it was gonna be Facebook. When I kept telling- What Holly, year was that? 2007, right. right? When I when I thought, what, six years ago, I used to go to Hollywood. I'll never forget one meeting that I had with CAA, because they were my agents, and I said, the problem with, because it was a bullshit meeting, and I said to them, you know what the problem with this town is? Is all of you are shitting on Netflix and the Kardashians, and in a decade, you won't be. Right. And that's exactly what happened. So I guess in a world where people that put out sex tape and went on Snapchat are the most famous people in the world, in a world where, like, I think it's execution. I I think WWE is there for the taking, and I don't think it's a money game. I think it's an execution game. I think every every Goliath has died to a David. It's just they usually beat David until they don't. Right. Like that's what excites me. East Ninja. The fucking esports Fortnite player is more famous than 99% of Major League Baseball. Like the world, there's a lot going on. I'm with you, but maybe it's optimism of an entrepreneur. I just believe. I saw a day Please. that the, I saw a day where where e, 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 esport players were going to be six figure people. I, I saw that. I saw that about seven years ago. I believe you. But again, when you when you and let, let's just be let's be hundred with this. We in America, like a young black man going into the office saying, "Man, look, man, esports is going to da 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 da," or a young black man going to uh, I remember I, I hit up uh, I hit up Floyd, KD, and like a couple other people when I when I wanted to try to do it, and everybody was kind of like I mean I don't know much about the wrestling. I'm just like okay, like this is Pepsi. You need Coke. You need it. It just has to. You still want to do it? Uh, I think I think the you cons got it. Sometimes. I think the, I think I think the cons got it under wraps now. I think what I'm doing right now is good. I want to be able to um be some type of liaison between. The the pop it. culture, the urban culture, I think that's right. and, and wrestling. I like that a lot too. So whether it be me just making an album, a hip hop inspired album of like Dizza and West Side Gun and all of these, a lot of like people that genuinely love ASAP for Rocky and all them, or or doing festivals down the road or something like that, or even maybe like an amusement park themed around it or something like that. Things like that, um, you know, those kind of you know, taking my fancy and and. Obviously, like I want to keep learning about tech because I want to. I, I, I it's something I'm going to talk to you about later, like when there's nobody around. But there's, I think now, in this era, some of us, some of us artists, can literally 
roll their album, fund their album through tech. 100%. And tech companies. 100%. And last night, me and Jesse were talking, and he was looking, his eyes just lit up. He was like, yo, we got to, we got to, you know, we got to, we got to, we got to put our finger on this. And there's side projects that I'm doing, or I may or may not be doing, but um, <laughs> that, that, that I can do independently and, you know, get it funded by a Netflix. And so I don't, I'm not paying for studio time and all these things and like, you know, release it with a documentary and then include some tech stuff. Every, the, every album that's successful has intent, regardless, as, whether it be the intent from an artistic point of view or intent of how you're marketing it. My, my weaknesses have been marketing my music and getting my brand out there. So I've kind of been seen as this famous, famous rapper, you know, moderately successful, but I haven't took that big leap into mainstream uh, music. Yep. For instance, I've, I've never won a Grammy or a VMA. Yep. Those are the big mainstream yep. awards or whatever. Yep. But I've, I've won BT Awards, Soul yep. Train Awards at the Wazoo. Yep. You know what I mean? And do you want that macro win? I do. For the leverage I do. that comes it, along with it? For the leverage it. that listen, comes along with it. Listen, listen, I, you know, you're talking, I've known a lot about you from afar. Back to what Phil said earlier, you were super early on Twitter. Which that was unheard of and I was there and so, you know, the reason we've finished a couple of sentences of each other is it's the same framework. Right. People are always like, you wanted, I was like, if I wanted to be famous, I would have, I would have not gone to my dad's liquor store. I would have moved to LA. It's just how the world evolved. Right. I just like the attention because I want to leverage it. Yeah. For yeah. whatever that might be. You know, uh, look at Chameleon there. He's like rich off, off of uh, yeah. tech, bro. Like, so it makes you think like, I, I think if I became, if I got, if I if I did some some crazy tech shit, it might fuel me more to make music. Cause now it's like, okay, now I can do things on my own itch. terms. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Of course I do. And there's no urgency behind like, you know, I gotta do this, gotta do, I can do it, You know what's so weird? As you were saying, I was looking at the bottle of empathy. Like mm -hmm. I grew up in the wine business. Then I checked out for a decade to like scratch a different itch, which made me want to go back into it. Right. That's what makes all the sense mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy this, my man. Can I ask you one more question? A hundred percent. What would you do if you won the lottery? Like a half a bill, and you want it just on like I call Woody Johnson and offer him to buy the New York Jets. The only thing I want to do professionally is own the Jets. So if I won the lottery, but what's interesting about it? How much do you think it, the Jets call? Like how much do you think he, that he, he would sell it for? Three billion. Billion. Uh, billion. Three billion. Yeah. So I think here's the thing. I the the bat. The, here's the single. Re this is true. I have never played the lottery. Mm -hmm. Late in the last seven, uh, in the last ten years, all these Powerballs I haven't played. You're gonna fuck around and win now because of that question. <laughs> I'm. I won't because I'm not gonna play because the thought. I'm gonna buy you a lottery ticket for your birthday. Now you have to play and you're gonna win. <laughs> now, boom! I own the Jets too. <laughs> <laughs> the single re the single reason I don't play the lottery is because if God forbid I won. That'd be the reason I got the Jets, and I don't want that scarlet letter. I feel like you would win the lottery and like be like, you know what? I'm gonna do something else with all this. Is gonna be something completely different, and go back. To, you, you'd probably go back to work the next day. Uh, my man, you you know that answer to be true because you're in the same place. The process is the oh, only no, thing I that won fucking. Oh, lottery. <laughs> <laughs> I got some. I got some. <laughs> I got some courier messages to deliver, man. I don't think I'm so. I'm gonna have a quartet go to people's office. Fuck you. <laughs> All type of shit. Like, boy, I'm that, gonna... That's fine because you're in a framework where you've got other partners, right? Mm -hmm. The reality is, but you're gonna still do. Right. Nah, Pash, you're gonna follow your Doers passion. do. Yeah. Doers for sure, do. For you sure. might say fuck you to people that are in your pockets, yeah. but you're gonna do Oh, no, nah, it's just gonna be IRS. Here you go. Leave me alone forever, IRS. Here. Here, take this. Yep. Leave me alone. Yep. I don't live in America no more. Yep. I live somewhere. I got my own island. I don't got taxes for shit. Leave me the fuck alone. Man. You hate paying taxes? It's not even I hate it. I don't think there's enough, um, there's not enough uh, explanations about the tax world when you, be, like I got rich, I yep. guess, in, when I was very young. Yep. You know, so I was touring and I was losing money every time I got on stage. And this is like my third tour at this time. And I'm like, you know what? I'm supposed to be like, I'm not supposed to be in the red after tour, bro. Like, not you're not supposed to be on your fourth tour on, on in the red. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you got your you got the booking agent, your manager, the lawyer, whoever, and then you know you pay your DJ, your hype man, and then tour bus, and then taxes. Like, it's like you're not supposed to be in the red. Like, and I don't think nobody really explains that enough to artists. Like, yo, this tax shit is real, bro. And they like to strike after your third or fourth album. You know what I'm saying? They don't. They gonna let you. Think you're doing something, but they're gonna they're gonna strike later. I don't think there's enough enough literacy 
as far as because who wants to fucking listen about taxes? Funny story when we when you know that I, picture. By the we, way, real we, quick, we, we just, Obama, I apologize. Obama, no, go ahead, I'm not, finish your I'm, story. I'm, I'm, go ahead, do your thing. Go ahead, go ahead. This is a rare <laughs> moment. Rare <laughs> moment. Go ahead. Nah, but I'm Obama, gonna give it to you. Obama, we was all there, all the rappers you yep. could think of. It. He was like, "Yo, I'm not gonna point to any names, but some of you guys, <laughs> I got a list of some of you guys who who, who aren't in good graces with the IRS." <laughs> Everybody was like, <laughs> "Everybody left." <laughs> it's like crazy. The re- listen, man, I agree with that. But it was funny. I was about to point to my report card straight up. I wish they taught taxes in school versus fucking cursive versus pick anything long division pick it a- y equals mx plus b I still don't all the way give a fuck like periodic tables yeah S- I don't sex ed I, I don't even school? know how to fucking write a check I ain't gonna hold you and I know that's a lot of people like you don't know how to write a check but like why should I why when where who's writing checks that's what I'm saying you fuck with cryptocurrency a little bit, like I, 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 again, like it's a lot going on in my world. My world is crazy, <laughs> but I know this is those, like these are the things that I want to do after this album cycle. Like there's a, a reset. Like I need to just be like, all right, cool, we did, we did, we did a fantastic job with this album. Now what? Good. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the studio since I left Atlantic Records. I've been in the studio nonstop, three EPs, countless features. Now it's album time, so it's like. When it, when when we about to reset, or it's like I don't have to worry about music no more, or I'm in a routine touring, I can start let's, put my energy on other things. Let's leave it with this: when it drops, you hit us up. We really, really want to help. 